What actions is China taking to combat deforestation? The Great Green Wall of China project began in 1978 with the goal of halting the growth of the Gobi Desert while also providing timber to the local population. The desert covers a fourth of China's area, which was quickly increasing until recently. But how did China stop the decertification and start their project on greening the Gobi Desert? To find out, do watch the video till the end. Welcome back to our channel, Circle of the Earth, where we explore everything about reforestation, decertification, and greening projects. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. China has been planting millions of trees in an ambitious attempt to hold back the Gobi Desert since 1978. Wang Jinyi, a farmer who has spent decades growing trees in the Gobi Desert, has helped turn the huge expanse green again. Armies of volunteers have joined the reforestation of the Gobi Desert as part of China's ambition to increase total forest coverage to 24.1% by 2023 under the state-run Green Great Wall. But it's not all black and white, though. Projects, no matter how well-intentioned, can backfire if executed incorrectly. This kind of thing can have a huge influence on local ecosystems. And on this magnitude, it's a big deal. It's safe to assume that success or failure will have worldwide ramifications. Let's not, however, get ahead of ourselves. First and foremost, we must understand why this endeavor was initiated in the first place. After a lengthy period of unsustainable growth, China has been fighting decertification since the 1950s. Deserts cover over a quarter of the country, and the Gobi Desert was expected to be spreading at a rate of 10,400 square kilometers per year in 2000. Some of the causes and impacts of the decertification are aeolian decertification caused by wind erosion after vegetation is destroyed. Water and soil loss caused by water erosion primarily in the Los Plateau. Salinization caused by poor water management and rock decertification primarily in the karst region of southwestern China. The Gobi Desert, which stretches from Mongolia to northwest China and covers 500,000 square miles, would dust Tiananmen Square practically every spring. So how could this possibly be a problem? The fundamental issue, of course, is monoculture forest planting. The Great Green Wall, like many reforestation efforts, uses fast-growing trees like aspen, white birch, and poplar to develop as quickly as possible. These ecosystems, however, are generally unstable and unsustainable due to a lack of variety. One single disease killed one billion poplar trees in 2000, delaying the project by nearly 20 years. Winter storms destroyed 10% of the artificial forest in 2008. In fact, this isn't even the greatest problem, because planting species like these can have the exact opposite effect than anticipated if local factors aren't taken into account. Heavy sandstorms rocked Beijing for the first time in six years last year, casting doubt on the country's reforestation efforts as land becomes increasingly scarce and trees are no longer able to mitigate the effects of climate change. Much of the land being planted is of poor quality, and many of these regions were never wooded in the first place. However, the tree species selected for this project require a lot of groundwater to thrive. Because these are already desolate circumstances, any smaller vegetation nearby, such as native grasses and bushes, will often wither and die. As a direct result of that, the topsoil loosens, making it further more vulnerable to wind erosion. As a result, more nutrients are taken from the soil. These plants could, of course, survive in conditions where they wouldn't typically be able to thrive with continuous human intervention. However, it's an unfeasible alternative, especially given the project's scale. In fact, according to Su Young research from 2004, only 15% of the trees are still standing. Plants that were planted between 1978 and 2004 survived. What about the trees that do make it? Apart from logging, they aren't useful for much else. So, that's when the Great Green Wall project comes in. 
The project is planned to last until 2050, with the goal of planting 88 million acres of forest in a wall that spans 3,000 miles and can be as wide as 900 miles in some parts. In recent years, the government has subsidized and expanded a number of major afforestation initiatives, resulting in the world's largest tree planting effort. Wang Tian Chang, Associate Professor at the Institute of Decertification Studies at the Chinese Academy of Forestry, and his family, now a local institution in Gansu Province, drive busloads of young volunteers into the desert each year from the provincial capital of Lanzhou to plant and water fresh trees and bushes. Since 1980, when the Wangs arrived on barren ground near the town of Hongshui in Wu Wei, they have been fighting decertification. Every year, Wang Tian Cheng and his family bring busloads of young volunteers into the desert from Lanzhou, the provincial capital, to plant and irrigate fresh trees and bushes. Over the previous four decades, the Great Green Wall Project, also known as the Three North Shelter Forest Program, has aided in increasing total forest covering to nearly a quarter of China's total territory, up from less than 10% in 1949. However, in the far northwest, tree planting is about more than just completing governmental reforestation goals or ensuring Beijing's safety. Every tree, bush, and blade of grass counts when it comes to generating a living from the most marginal farming, especially when climate change raises temperatures and puts water supplies under greater strain. The more forest grows and eats into the dunes, the better it is for us, said Wang Yinji, Wang's son, who has taken over much of the backbreaking farming and planting while his father recovers from illness. A forest planted about a decade ago protects one side of the family's four acres of property, while a long sandy bluff protects the other. Things became a lot better after 1999 when the tree planting accelerated, Wang Yinji added, referring to the state-led reforestation project. The maize in our field grew taller. The sand that was blowing in from the east and northeast was no longer blowing in. China intends to raise overall forest coverage from 23% last year to 24.1% by 2025, but the continuous development has masked several underlying issues. Some experts are also skeptical. Jennifer L. Turner, director of the China Environment Forum at the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., says, With the Great Green Wall, people are planting lots of trees in large ceremonies to halt decertification, but then no one actually takes care of them and they die. In fact, many of the trees that are planted in regions where they do not naturally flourish just die after a few years. Those that do make it can suck up a lot of the groundwater that the native grasses and shrubs require, further degrading the soil. Hundreds of employees from government agencies in Dengwang are expected to arrive soon, with the goal of planting 31,000 trees on 93 acres of land in just four days, according to estate officials. Ma of the Forest Stewardship Council said, The government and farmers should collaborate to find a means to make money while also ensuring that water levels are maintained. When financial incentives are implemented without sufficient direction and controls, there is a major risk that programs like these will exacerbate the damage already done to China's remaining old-growth forests and the biodiversity they support. Determining whether China's Great Green Wall benefits or harms local ecosystems is difficult. A 2014 study of China's major tree planting programs by a group of American and Chinese scientists concluded that the extent to which the programs have changed local ecological and socioeconomic conditions is still poorly understood, as local statistics are often unavailable or unreliable. Scientists predict that decertification will worsen as the Earth's climate changes, recommending that humans refrain from intervening and give the ecosystem time to recover. The Gobi Desert is now home to a diverse range of flora and animals, including numerous endangered species like the snow leopard and the Bactrian camel. It was never the intention to try to beat the desert, but to find a way to hold it back from growing. That's all for this video. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified on every new video from our channel. Thanks for watching.